let's get started. I would like to introduce Kaizen Zone, Jason Schwartz. Thank you, Sherry, and thank you everyone for joining me today. Uh, we're going to talk about how to brighten yellow metals, specifically how to remove tarnish, right? This is the, the question we're trying to answer is we've all seen this uh, doorknob or other type of brass part that over time gets not only dirty, but significantly darkens, right? And so while we see it on doors, we can also see it in your industrial parts, whether you're trying to reload ammunition or get some brass uh, parts that have been on your shelf for maybe too long. How do you brighten those up so that you can get that product out the door? Right. Well, the first thing we have to understand is what are yellow metals, uh, right? They're copper based alloys, so copper and copper based alloys, including brass, which is 2 thirds copper, 1 third zinc bronze, which is almost 9 parts copper, 1 part tin. And the really important about thing about understanding this is it's the copper that's causing the issues. Right? Specifically copper oxidation. So copper is very reactive. Uh, especially in the presence of oxidants, right? So it'll react with oxygen, water, water vapor, sulfur compounds, and chlorates to produce all these copper oxide reaction products. And as you can see on this picture, there's not just one, there's a plethora of them. That's how you get all these uh, different colors that some people have even turned into, you know, new age art. So what are they, right? You've got regular copper oxide, Cooper's oxide, which is just a different oxidation state of the copper. Uh, it can react and do sulfates, carbonates, and chlorides, which are what give you those very pretty blue greens. Uh, but it's it's important because once we understand that this is what we're trying to remove, then we can actually start to go after it. Uh, in fact, sometimes this is even a good thing. You know, copper oxide can form a patina over the surface of an outdoor structure or statue. The most famous example of that is the Statue of Liberty, right? And the really important part about it is that these copper oxides, whether they're a patina or oxidation on your parts, is they're not going to degrade the base metal further. Uh, unlike iron oxide, which is commonly known as rust, uh, that will continue to eat away at your parts. And not only do you have to remove it quickly, but you have to make sure you haven't uh, damaged the integrity of the part. If you're interested in dealing with rust more specifically, Will Sweet has done an excellent tech to tech the beginning of June on how to deal with steel corrosion, both removing and preventing it. I, I highly recommend you check that out. But today we're going to focus on the copper oxides and removing that. And as you can see here, this is called Black Horse uh, Square in Portugal. When over time, it's the statue is oxidized and formed a patina just like the Statue of Liberty, but they actually wanted to remove it. And the interesting part is you can still see, even though this picture is a little small, all the intricate details have been preserved, even though that statue has been oxidized for uh, hundreds of years. And the important part about that is, like we said, if you've got brass or copper or bronze parts on your shelves, even though they've got a layer of oxidation on them, that they may not look pretty, if we can remove that, we can restore it to something that's useful. So how do we remove oxidation? Well, now that we know, you know what we're going after, those copper oxides, copper sulfates, uh, we know that oxides are polar, and in chemistry, light dissolves light, so we need a polar solvent. We also know that these metal oxides, metal compounds, are more soluble in acidic solutions, solutions with a lower pH. And also that chelation helps, right? And chelation is when one molecule literally grabs onto another molecule in solution. Uh, and fortunately, there's one compound that has all of those properties in one. Now, if you don't have a degree in chemistry or take organic chemistry in college, you probably don't know what that is, but you do know what these are, lemons, right? So that molecule on the previous slide was actually citric acid and it turns out that citric acid is a great oxide remover uh, but before we jump the gun and go into how great citric acid is the first step is always to clean off the dirt especially for industrial parts because most of the time just like this doorknob even though the branch is tarnished up here you still got a nice thick layer of dirt all over those parts and whether that's oil grease grime or just shop dirt 
getting that off first is important because it will extend the life of any acid bath that you're using to brighten the parts, uh, but also it'll greatly reduce your cycle times because that acid will be more effective if you already removed that dirt. And for that, a mild alkaline cleaner will do wonders. But back to citric acid, right? Uh, like we said, it removes the oxidation by actually dissolving the copper oxides. Uh, it itself is a chelator, so it's not only gonna remove those, but it's gonna trap extra ions in solution. And a really nice feature is it's less toxic than you know, your strong acid bright dips or other uh, different types of processes. For me, it's my go-to process for removing light and or consistent oxidation and restoring what your original finish was to the part. Uh, as we mentioned, it doesn't remove oil, grease, dirt very well. It can do it. You can do a one-step process, but your cycle times are going to be longer and you're going to be changing out your bath more often. Uh, the other thing that citric acid doesn't do particularly well is it's not going to brighten the parts more than the original finish or the finish that's currently on the part. And I say the finish that's currently on the part because if you have significant corrosion where it's affected the surface of the part, such as this one in this uh, brazed part where you've got copper and brass that have been fluxed, soldered, and brazed together, you can see that the heat has caused extra uh, corrosion in particular areas where that flux was. And it's actually altered the finish of the part. So if I put this into put this part into a citric acid bath, it's going to brighten things up nicely, but you're still going to see this uneven finish where the oxidation has been more significant in certain areas. So uneven corrosion, uneven finish with citric acid. So how do you further brighten or get that consistent finish if you've already removed all of the oxidation and you've got a part like that that has different finishes? over the surface of it. Well, the old school way is polishing and buffing, right? We've probably all seen Brasso or some similar product at Home Depot that mechanically polishes a part uh, or any type of brass doorknob. That's how you would go after your, your brass doorknob at home. But in, in the industry, we want a more consistent process that can handle a larger batch of parts, right? We don't want to hand polish a, a thousand little brass connectors. So that's where bright dips and electropolish processes come in. But with the electropolish, with any of these processes, really, you know, the the idea of getting that consistent finish is actually physically removing small parts of the metal. It's the same process as you know that brasso that we we're talking about earlier. That's because shine is directly correlated to the refraction refraction of light. So if you see here on these rough edges, right. Uh, Light is going to light rays are going to come in and they're going to bounce around and get kind of trapped in here and not exit. Whereas if you, you don't even have to make it a completely smooth surface. If you take off those rough edges and make some more hills and valleys, light's easier to escape. You're going to get a bigger shine. If you can get this type of uh, surface finish consistently across the part, you're going to get a nice shiny part. In an electropolis process, it does exactly that, right? It chemically takes away these rough edges by breaking them off and sending them to uh, the cathode, right? So in this case, your workpiece is your, your anode. You send in a cathode and you submerge the part in an electrolytic solution, the workpiece being whatever part you're, you're trying to polish up. And that current will actually take off tiny little particles and you can achieve a polish on a larger, more industrial scale. Uh, it's really nice for those industrial processes. And it's actually, if you serve an electroplating process, this is the chemical reversal of that. We're actually taking small parts, small particles off of the part. Uh, what about bright dipping? So bright dipping, to me, this is the go-to process when you've got this type of part that we saw earlier that's been brazed and has this nasty, uneven corrosion or heat-related corrosion, especially from those welding flux processes. Uh, as we mentioned, the citric acid cleaner, it's going to knock off all the oxidation, but you're still going to have an uneven finish. So what does the bright dip do? Well, it's an interesting process because it's actually gonna create a sacrificial oxide layer. 
And as you can see, this is after step one, you've already got this smooth, consistent finish. It's not the color we want, uh, but that's because we've created an extra oxide layer. And the combination of a strong acid and peroxide, uh, hydrogen peroxide is an oxidizer, makes sense, uh, will preferentially create a layer of one of those particular copper oxide products on the part. And so we're going to knock off all the other ones and we're going to create a consistent single oxide product on that part that gives it that consistent finish. And then, just like we talked about earlier, once you've got this oxide layer on the part, what do you do next? Well, you remove that oxide layer just like you would remove regular oxidation on your part. And whether it's a citric acid or stronger acid dip, that uh, sacrificial layer gets taken off and you get this nice, bright, shiny, consistent finish across the part because we uh, actually etched the, the surface of that part by creating a, an oxide you're chemically reacting with the surface of the copper or the brass and then removing that chemical reaction. It's the same process as polishing and buffing in a way because you're taking off that surface layer of metal. You're just doing it by via chemical reaction instead of electronically or mechanically. All right. So to wrap everything up, uh, clean first, always. It doesn't matter if you're using uh, citric acid, bright dip, electro polish. Uh, can't stress enough that your process is going to be better, more consistent, and last longer if you clean off all of your dirt, chalk, grime, oils, grease off those parts first. Uh, to me, citric acid is the go-to first step. You try that out, if that works, if that gives you the process you want, it's a lot better, it's a lot more environmentally friendly, uh, and it's a great first step process. But if you do have some stronger oxidation or some un inconsistent finish on your parts, Bright dipping to me is the way to go, uh, or you can also do an electropolis process. But that's how you take uh, something like this part and turn it into something bright and shiny. So that's all I've got for today. I, I hope you enjoyed the presentation, and Sherry, we'll, we'll open it up to any questions. Thank you, Jason. If you would like to discuss this topic further, please contact your local Kaizen representative or send an email to tech, the number two, tech at kaizen.com and we will have one of our cleaning experts schedule follow-up with you as soon as possible again we thank you all for joining us today and we hope to see you again soon stay safe stay healthy and have a great day